the new picture obstacles that could determine where the thumbprint goes on the ballot. The party has been overwhelmed with seemingly deep factions, indiscipline, acrimony, and what appears to be apathy amongst its members. There's no doubt the NPP is keen on winning over voters who they expect will grant them another term in office. But is the NPP, as it is now, fit for purpose? Will it break the eight? These are the hot issues and burning questions begging for answers from the leadership of the new patriotic party. My guest today is young and steadfast, who some see as the level-headed personality to calm the storm in the party. But to others, the party is heavier than his shoulders can carry. I am joined today by the General Secretary of the ruling New Patriotic Party. Justin Kodia Frimpong is my guest today on Hot Issues. Justin, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Uh, thank you and good afternoon to you and your cherished viewers also. Uh, let's talk about your party, the NPP. We've seen the internal wrangling. We've seen absentee MPs in Parliament. We've seen resignations and the butterfly movement. We've also seen party use on the rampage. Is the NPP crumbling under your watch as General Secretary? Well, it's uh, something that I will certainly and absolutely disagree with you. For anyone who has followed political jurisprudence will understand that a party as big as the New Patriotic Party, when there is a contest, certainly the stakes will be high. There will be tension, there will be bickering, there will be mass langing, there will be attacks because the stakes are high. But at the end of the day, it's how the party navigates through all these turbulence that determines whether the party is stronger or the party is crumbling. We have had elections from 1992 to elect flag bearers. We have had elections in 96, in 98, in 2007, 2014, and now um, 2023. As you are aware, we need to have a new flag bearer going to the 2024 elections. So it's part of the normal no, no, political no, Notwithstanding, notwithstanding, uh, your critics will say the level of indiscipline within the NPP uh, transcends the period of election uh, o o over the last few months. And so um, for them, your ability to hold the party together would have been a, a feather in your cap. However, you have failed to exert that control. So if you refer to indiscipline, can you give instances mm -hmm. where issues came up that we did not respond or we did not act? What are some of the actions you took, for instance, with the young people um, uh, who attacked uh, UTV? What are some of the actions you, yes, you took on Yes, as a party, that? on the day that that unfortunate incident happened, we issued a statement. In fact, at that night, we sent the director of communication to UTV to debunk or to rebook what uh, those uh, young uh, uh, people did, or but the young guys did. What was the action that was taken outside of rebuking what they had done, outside of the, you know, the statement that you had released to condemn yes, the action? Yes, but on, on the state's part, you are aware that the matter went to court and they were fined. On the part, because it happened in Geta What has before. become of that? The matter is that this might continue in Geta Accra uh, party, and I'm sure they'll come out with their findings or decisions very soon, which you, you'll get to know once it comes out. I see. And, and I don't mean for us to dwell on that, but what should we expect from that disciplinary hearing? Um, what are the sanctions that could be uh, handed down to these young people who just that? Now, the party constitution is very clear. I think Article 2 uh, talks about let me be sure about it. I, I think Article two, Article 2 talks about mm. the duties of members. And as a member of the new, if Article 3 rather, it talks about MPP's membership. Right. And what is expected of every member of our mm -hmm. party. The, the do's and don'ts. Right. So it's a duty of every member of our party to uphold the good name and reputation of the party. 
Mm. So any actions or any action really goes contrary to what is stipulated in our constitution. It's a breach of our constitution. matter is before it right. is before your committee yeah, we, we thrive in the rule of law mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we are talking about independence of the judiciary so mm -hmm. i'm not in a position to criticize well, the, the determination as done by the court the courts maybe in their own ways don't feel that for what happened do you this, think those who feel it was a slap on the wrist are justified well so far as punitive action has been taken we look at the import what 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 is the effect what do we seek to achieve one, to let the public know that what happened was unfortunate. The court does not subscribe to it. Various stakeholders don't subscribe to it. MPP as a political party don't subscribe to it. So at least it will serve as a deterrent that this is what you did. Do, do you it think was it was wrong. deterrent enough? Well, at least for the mere fact that to, to arrange someone before the court, that's even an embarrassment. Well, right. So I, I want us to take a look at some of the things that notable people within your party have said and complained about. For instance, Alan Chermantin has complained about victimization and attacks. Um, it's easy to say that the party has lost its moral bearing. Uh, and, and I'd like us to uh, you know, take a look at what Alan has spoken about. Um, and quoting him, he says, all the promises made by the party leadership were never fulfilled. And indeed, the divisive and hostile attacks on my person and my supporters remained for several years thereafter. This was him at the time he uh, resigned from the party. It is common knowledge that any party member who is associated directly or indirectly with Allah is treated with disdain and considered an outcast. Well, um, to start with, I will respectfully disagree with the statement by Mr. Chemati. Since we constituted this presidential elections committee, at every stage and at every point in time, there was that close collaboration between the presidential elections committee and the aspirants mm -hmm. to the extent that on the Thursday before the Saturday 26th, from they themselves, the aspirants, in their own West, stated that they are very satisfied with the work done by the elections committee. So there were no issues until Saturday. Again, we were looking at instances whereby one can point clearly with evidence that maybe supporter A or supporter B was being harassed or was being attacked. In this government, we had ministers who are cabinet members who were supporting Mr. Chamati. At no point in time did we hear even one of them complaining that he or she has been vilified or has been persecuted because he or she is supporting Mr. Chamati. I don't know whether I heard of any such. You go to Parliament, where we have members, 137 members of Parliament. None of them. You can't tell me that all the 137 members of Parliament are supporting one particular candidate. They all have their respective candidates that they support, that they choose to support. None of them have, have come out to complain. So uh, it's, it's rather unfortunate that such a statement was made by him. but. For political parties, and even our constitution is also very clear, everyone has the right to join a political right. party at any point in time. If at any point in time one feels that what he perceives or what he thinks is not in adding them with a political party, the person has every right constitutionally 
to decide to back out or to leave the political party. The, the majority leader has made the point about the possibility of Alan being talked back into the party. Is this something the party plans to explore? Does it resonate with the rest of the party? Well, well for, for, for us as a political party, our focus is to win the elections in 2024. And for anything that has to be done, for us to win the elections, we are all up for it. And the constitution is also very clear. It states when a person leaves the party and the person wants to come back, there is a process that the person must follow. Does the party look to make the attempt to get him back into the party? Well, well for now, there should be, there should be some some discussions as to why A or B has to happen. And at the end of the day, it also starts for Mr. Chiamatin. He decided to opt out from the political party. Mm -hmm. So if for one or two reasons, maybe he wants to come back, as a general secretary of the party, I'll have no problems with it. So, so have, has the party made such overtures in the past to try and get him back? Well, if there has been that discussion, you don't expect me to sit here and talk about it. But well, what are what? No, no, no. At the end of the day, there are certain things that are discussed publicly. There are certain things that also, are also discussed privately. So if it gets to that point, and maybe there's that discussion, there's that consensus that everyone, anyone who left the party and wants to come back to the party, mm. If there's that discussion, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly discuss with you. You'd agree with me that Alan's resignation is quite a divisive issue for the party. And you, you, you owe it to your constituents, you owe it to your party folk uh, to let them know whether overtures have been made. And, and it could be that they have been made and have failed. You should let them know, don't you think? Well, at the end of the day, you see, let us not underrate the intelligence of our the rank and file of our party. Those who have followed our political journey from 1992 to date have seen very fiercely contested elections before in 1992. You talk about personalities like Professor Dubwai, Dr. Selby, Mr. Safu Edu, uh, Mr. John Adyokun Kofo. That contest was clearly contested. You come to 1996, the GH Mensah, Blessed Mary, President Kofo, and the rest. We have gone through all this cycle, fast forward to 2007. So the party has history that we know that as a political party that pride ourselves as being the doyan of multi party democracy in our country. We understand that when we go for contest, stakes will be high, there will be tension. To some level, there will be some infractions, all those things. But the ultimate point or the ultimate thing that we all look up to is the bigger uh, elephant. Right. You look at the elephant and ask yourself, at the end of the day, what lies ahead? Where do you want to get to? What do well, you want well, to Justin, achieve? So what I'm saying is that in order to reach what lies ahead, yes. a divisive issue such as this should be um, properly addressed within that rank and file of the party. And it doesn't seem that you want to share how the party has addressed that. Uh, because if, if you recall, um, after August 24, August 26, when Mr. Chamartin made his press statement, the party also had a press conference two days after, afterwards. And in the press conference, I addressed it and articulately stated the position of the party. And I think that is where we should look at that the issues that were raised, like intimidation and those things, we, had, we talked about it. And another issue that came up was the unfortunate incident that happened in the Northeast when someone was assaulted, mm. his agent. Assault is a crime. You, are, you will agree with me. I, I, I will, and I would want us to talk about that a little. But let's wrap it up on this Alan issue. It would seem that the, the, the party now... Um, has made peace with the fact that Alan has left, but are you happy about it? Well, it's, it's a very unfortunate uh, uh, situation that, that happened. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, it has happened. You can't continue to cry over a spilt milk. One less problem, it sounds. Well, you are saying it. 
Does that sound like one less problem no, for the party? No, you are saying But for us as a party, we are, we are focused towards the November 4th presidential primary. That is our goal for now. I see. Let's talk about the Northeast um, situation that you brought up earlier uh, when, uh, you know, one of the agents uh, at the Poland uh, center there, Ali Zakaria, had been attacked. Um, what has become of that? Well, from, from, from the report that you got from the presidential election committee reps the, who went there. Uh -huh. One, the party condemns any form of attack or assault in any of our internal elections. The new patriotic party over the years has been the, the number one advocate for multi-party democracy. So we understand what has to be done as a political party. And we believe that the best way to choose leaders is through elections. But again, assault is a crime. It's something that affects the states. So I'm sure the Ghana Police Service on their own are looking into the matter. Did the party take any the two. actions? The party, through its presidential elections committee, make referral to the disciplinary committee of a party. And as I speak to you, we are, they have about six cases which are before it that they are addressing mm -hmm. and looking into the matter. Mm -hmm. And Northeast is part of it. Right. So at the end of the day, once the disciplinary committee comes out with their findings mm -hmm. and where people have to be dealt with in accordance with our constitution, I'm sure the party will not shy away from it. But you, November 4 is just around the corner. Yes, we don't know what, what sanctions have been um, handed down to these people and, and whatever actions they took then. How is that deterrent for anyone who could, who, who could be fomenting trouble on November 4? One, one thing, one area that I'm, one point I may agree with you is that maybe the disciplinary committee need to speed up. But again, at the end of the day, even as general secretary, when the matter is before this matter committee, I don't have the power to question or to call them that they are supposed to uh, regulate their meetings or their procedure in my details. So that's why we want the this matter committee to finish their work, come out with their findings, and they are doing the part to work or, or act on it. Uh, so again, there's no example yet for anybody who would be looking to uh, foment trouble. But let's look at some other um, issues within the party and in relation to choosing the flag bearer. We know there are those who believe that the current internal issue um, within your party, it's a sign of a loss for the 2024 election, even before you choose your flag bearer. Well, well, I, I, would, I wouldn't agree with you. I don't know which angle, you are, again, once again, you are coming from. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time the new patriotic party is having a, a presidential primaries. And I, I gave you instances, 92, from 92 up to uh, 2007, 2014. So it's no news. Well, so, so what I'm saying is that a lot of times, and again, yeah. if we go by that history, a lot of times these internal wranglings, internal uh, discontent among party members always foretells how things go for you in the 2024, in, 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 you know, in the general elections. And you seem to be towing that line. No, but, but if, if we are, yeah, to be fair, mm -hmm. other political parties have had their primaries. We saw that with the NP, NDC and, in the lead-up to and, the 2016 election. No, but the, and we know what happened with no, the NDC but in the, the 2020, but the NDC, 2016 Are you trying to tell me that the NDC presidential primary this year was peaceful? For every political party, we are, we are not angels. We are not saints. When there is a contest, certainly there will be some level of infractions. Rules will be made. It, the guidelines will come out. By the end of the day, there will be certain level of infractions. From 1992, even general elections, but, uh, if, if you can let me land. I mean, right, we, you land quickly because we, I wanted we to had, ask We you. have had elections. Uh -huh. We have never had perfect elections. But at the end of the day, you ask yourself, what was the success rate? The issue that we are, we are talking about, the Northeast issue that happened, we held elections in 17 polling centers. Tell me, apart from Northeast, which other center did you hear any infractions? So are you trying to state or state that because of what happened in Northeast, 
the election that took place in the 16 centers were not successful. So, I, I, you know, I just want us to, uh, well, I wanted us to move away from it, but since you brought it up, I, 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 would, I wouldn't say that the issue with the election is just physical attacks. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about infractions and the fact that candidates have accused each other of, of paying delegates in order to vote, vote for them, which is a flagrant uh, infraction on your, your uh, guidelines for the presidential primary elections, isn't it? But it will seem that very little has been done about it. So unless maybe you cost someone at taking money or someone paying money to a delegate. So at the end of the day, when a person makes an allegation, uh -huh. it should be backed by evidence. Right. Are you telling me the party treated those as hearsays? Of course. If, if, if you make allegations, you don't bring evidence. So I should be going around asking delegates, how much did someone give to you? Uh, how much did you take for another person? No, when I don't have proof. Justin, that sounds simplistic because, again, mm -hmm. you are the same person who keeps telling me about how things have been forwarded yes. to the disciplinary committee. Yes. If there were allegations, not from and, just and, and, anybody, hold on, okay. not just from anybody, but from... The people who are key in the electoral process saying this is what is happening. We know Kennedy Japan has come to um, woo people and tell them that, look, don't accept the money. If you accept the money, you should even vote for me. If, if such issues come up, you're telling me the party was not interested? Well, well, at the end of the day, there's a difference between making a statement out there and also officially presenting it to the party. The question you should ask me, has the party received any petition to that effect? Which is no. So if the party has not received any petition and certain statements are made, I would take it as maybe part of political strategy. So you're considering them hearsays? De definitely so. Right. Let's move on away from that and uh, uh, quickly talk about Professor Frimpon Boateng, who said that members from the party were instructed to make life difficult for him because of his Galamse report. Well, well, again, if he can provide evidence to, to prove or to buttress the point that he has made, then I can speak to it. But the where day, it's, where it's members easy. instructed to well, make life difficult I, I was for not, I was never instructed. None of the national officers, none of our party rank and file have been called, have been instructed to go A or go B. And I consider it as, as a derogatory statement, even against the party. It is hard time that when certain pronouncements are made, I'm also expecting you as a journalist to ask them to provide evidence. It makes it easy. Well, this is what he said. Go he on. said, I heard on radio myself, yes. some NPP communicators were insulting me. And I was told that NPP members were instructed to make life difficult for me because of my Galamse report. I have issues with the current configuration of the NPP, so I have alienated so, myself. So one, the point is, I was told. By who? By the general secretary, by the national chairman, or by the president? If you have gotten that evidence that it's Mr. A, even let's assume that the person don't, that doesn't have a detailed evidence to support it, but some names would have been mentioned, then it makes it easy for us to trace and to look into the matter. But if we make that simplistic statement that I was told. By the, who? Just then, at the same time, you cannot also deny the fact that a lot of your communicators yes. from across the country really descended on uh, Professor Frimpon Boateng at the time the Galamse report had come out. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, what did the party think about those things? Well, well, to start with, as a political party, the first step that we always look up to is to make sure that, one, we have a country to run as a government. And two, at the end of the day, we need to embark on a journey, on activities that will satisfy the expectation of, of the Ghanaian populace. So that at the end of the day, when you are going for election, people will ask you, you came into office to do A, B, and C. The question is, has the government, in its actions or inaction, shown that is committed towards fighting Galamsey or not? Yes or no? What For do me, you think? I would say yes. Then two, when certain statements are made against the party, how we react will be different. 
maybe as general secretary, I'll have a way of reacting to issues. Some man also feel that, no, if you're attacking my party, if I make an allegation or serious allegation against my party, it should be backed by A, B, C, D. If it's not backed by them, then you don't expect me to sit on the fence and keep quiet. Definitely, the person will also raise his issues so, as to it. So those those insults and attacks on him. Well, I don't, I, 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 I don't know about the justified. insults and attack, but what I know is that certain statements were made by him, which majority of our party people disagreed with him. I see. One of the things he's also talked about is the fact that the NPP, uh, as it is now, is the shadow of itself. Um, he doesn't think that the NDC, the NPP. Uh, is, is still what he used to be? I think he's entitled to his opinion. That is what he sees. But for us being the party who follows the dictates of the constitution of our party, our party remains resolute. And we are in the process of electing our flag bearer. And once we elect our flag bearer, the party will, will start its campaign, tell the good story, the successes that we have achieved from 2017 even to date, and as well as the challenges and what we intend to do in the 2024 elections and after the 2024 election. For, for him, he's entitled to his opinion, but I also respectfully disagree with him. I see. One of the things that you've spoken uh, about is the performance of government appointees and really anybody who represents the party in any uh, arm of government. So I want to talk about the MPs. And um, an example that comes to mind is Adjoa Safo and her long absence from parliament. Uh, the party, as we understand, made overtures to try to bring her back. Uh, but uh, since she's been back, what has been the conversation that the party has had with Adjoa Safo? Well, well what, what I can say on that is that, um, yes, issues happened in the past. And she came back to apologize to the party. And now I can tell you that she's doing her work as a member of parliament for Dome Kwabinya. So, so far as the party is, is concerned now, currently, we are satisfied with what she's doing as a member of parliament for her constituency. The issues that happen belongs to the past. So at I the see. end of the day, the party will have internal elections. Uh -huh. So it is up to the constituents in her constituency to decide but is whether... This, is this setting a good example if there are no consequences for an MP who um, leaves her job, party makes attempts to bring her back, and, you know, she shuns all those attempts, refuses to come back, and comes back on her own time, and you tell me you're satisfied? So, so at the end of the day, let the delegates decide. The delegates and the good people in the Ormeo Kwabinya will decide. And fortunately, now we are having parliamentary primaries in February. Did her absence have any, do you think her absence has had any impact on your party? Well, certainly at that period, yes. But now everything is fine. So I want us to make progress on that. I see. We'll see how that goes. But let's talk about um, Dr. Bawamia, the vice president, who many within the party, including some of those contending uh, in the presidential primary, say he is the establishment candidate. They think that the rank and file has been whipped in line in order to ensure that Baumia, uh, the vice president, emerges uh, winner. Well, when, when, when sometimes questions are raised as someone being establishment candidate, when you talk about the establishment, who are you referring to? The, the echelons of the party. So who are the actions? The National Party? And that it the, even includes you, the, the National Secretary Executive, or... the National Council of Elders? Well, well, so far as I know, as General Secretary of the party, together with our National Chairman and National Officers, we, are n we have never at any point in time been coerced. We have never at any point in time been suggested to mm. or before to support a particular candidate. For us, throughout our dealings with all the aspirants and even the presidential elections committee and the rank and file of our party, we have been very consistent that our interest is to make sure that we navigate this process successfully and for us to get the flag bearer. That is our interest. Mm, and issues, even in my elections, when I was contesting to become general secretary, 
I heard the same comment that you are making, that mm -hmm. I'm not the establishment candidate. Someone is establishment candidate. And I asked myself, who is that establishment candidate? At the end of the day, I'm going to a contest. I believe I have a vision. I believe that I can offer so much to my political party. I went to the delegates. I was able to convince them. Mm. And they voted for me. So I believe the November 4th election, it's not about the perception who establishment candidate is, who is no establishment candidate. It's about the candidate who has been able to drive home a successful campaign. Uh, despite what you're saying, we know that a candidate had promised to give the president a showdown. Um, how did the party process that and what has been done about it? Again, that issue is also before uh, this my committee and I wouldn't want to comment about it until they are done with their uh, findings on it. So did someone petition for it to go to the disciplinary committee? Yes, it is committee? within the disciplinary committee. No, I'm asking. It is within the disciplinary committee. So definitely if it's not petition, it can't go to the disciplinary committee. I so see. It is within the disciplinary committee. Okay. I just wanted to make sure of okay. that. That's fine. All right. So let's, let's, let's go back to the primaries and talk about, uh, you know, the party's ready, readiness for uh, the primaries. How's it going? Well, so far, so good. But for the work that the presidential elections committee have done to date, and what we have in the party now, as it is referred to as intra-party advisory committee, you normally it's inter-party, but this time around we refer to it as intra-party because it's within the party. And from each point in the discussion, in the decision making, the presidential elections committee always do it with the aspirants. So what I have here, that's the rules and regulation governed November 4th elections mm. has been signed by the Presidential Elections Committee and the aspirants. And as a part, knowing how delicate and the tension involved in the presidential uh, primaries, in most elections, internal elections, one issues or one issue that always arises is the album who and who are going to vote. Not long ago, when the NDC were having their presidential primary, we heard the commentaries that came with respect to album. For us as new patriotic party, because we are always the pace setters, the album was given to the aspirants one month before the November 4th, so that at least they can peruse it, look at where there are issues, and they are able to bring it for us to address it. Right. So what, what are some of the, you know, outside of the album, what are some of the things that are in this, uh, in, in the, you know, set of guidelines that will be addressing uh, uh, some challenges that yes, we face? Yes, so for before? instance, on November 4th, the elections are going to be held as if we are conducting national elections. In the previous elections or constituency elections, whereby the party... Uh, delegates will gather at one place and several speakers will come and speak and there will be that euphoria and those things. It's not going to happen this time around. Mm -hmm. This time around, the electoral commission and the police will be fully in charge of the process. So it will be like a general election. You just walk in, you go and cast your vote, then you leave. Right. So that's one of the processes that the presidential elections committee have put in place. Aside that, too, it is stated in the rules and guidelines that no one is allowed to take pictures when the person is casting his or her vote. Mm -hmm. Also, it's also indicated in the rules and guidelines that even if you are national officer, you have regional officer, you have constituency officer, you don't have any business in the running of the elections. Everything is, will be done by the Presidential Elections Committee, the Electoral Commission, and the Ghana Police. And the aspirants themselves have agreed among themselves that agents for the various aspirants are not going to be ministers or, or government appointees or party officers. They themselves reached that agreement. Though National Council indicated that that agreement does not bind the party. Mm. But if among themselves, this is what they want to do, they are, they are, they are free to do so. I, I, you know, I, again, for me, I'd like to uh, know how 
how much of these rules that the party intend to um, adhere to? Because in the previous election, one of your candidates who dropped out uh, was unhappy about how things turned out for him. And, and it, you know, quoting him, he said, not going for the runoff as it should have been was unconstitutional. And for him, he couldn't be a part of such a process, for which reason he stepped off. So uh, how sure are we that you're going by your own rules and regulations? Well, 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 when it comes to presidential primaries, it is managed by the National Council. It's the National Council that determines its rules and regulations for the presidential primaries. It's the National Council that decide the venue and date for the elections. Decisions as to how rerun is supposed to be done rest within the bosom of National Council. So that does not mean that you, you can't disagree with the decision of National Council. But what, what was the decision of the National Council? And I would think that it would be in the guideline, which is what uh, the candidate who dropped out had talked about. Because if you look at the guideline 25 on yeah. issue of tie in the electoral uh, college runoff. It is clear that in the event of a tie between two or more candidates for the fifth position, a runoff election will be conducted. Yes. But the, this, this, this rules and, these rules and regulations were put together by who? Presidential Elections Committee. Mm -hmm. Presidential Elections Committee power does not override that of National Council. Right. So, yes, indeed, the Presidential Elections Committee made these rules. But when there was a tie at the National Council meeting, National Council took that power from them and said that, yes, even though you have come out with these rules, to ensure convenience and also to make sure that at least we make progress. This is how they want that uh, uh, tie to be conducted. Well, let's talk about the people in the Volta region, particularly those who have been affected uh, largely by, by the floods. Uh, there are MPP members there, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, how will the elections be conducted in those areas? Uh, to start with, on, the, on, on behalf of the party, we also want to express uh, sympathy uh, towards the good people in the Botai region. And when is the and party visiting them? Uh, we have. You have? Yes. Right. And um, definitely the presidential election committee are factor all those things into consideration. I'm sure next week when they do their press conference, they will address uh, the challenges that are in both region. Okay. So as a, as of now, you do not know what the plan is. No, I, w I wouldn't want to speak for the presidential elections committee. Once they do their press conference, they will address those mm. issues. Indeed. Let's talk about post-primary events and y how the party will ensure that whoever wins will have the support of choosing your words, rank and file uh, of the party, given the things that we, the events that we are seeing now. Well, after November 4th, the, in fact, in the evening of November 4th, I'm sure by then the results would have been collated and the Electoral Commission will make the declaration. And on that same day, the party will adore its flag bearer. At that point, the elections or campaign would have been over. Mm -hmm. Now the party will have a candidate. Whatever infractions, whatever bickering, whatever maslanging that happened, mm -hmm. whatever the altercations that happened would have been over. We didn't have aspirant A against aspirant B. Now, it will be a, the candidate of the new patriotic party. As a national party, our first task is to bring all the aspirants together, to go to elections and to lose. It's not an easy joke. At least some people may take time for them to even understand that they have indeed lost the elections. So that is why the mother party is there. How we'll be able to quickly bring all of them together and to let them understand that it's a contest. And going to elections, you, we are all aware that either you win or you lose. So we know that's the tax that the party national council of elders and national officers have to do mm. quickly after after the election. And I'm, I can assure you that we have been in that situation before. And always we find a find way around it to bring all our party people together.
I want to talk about the kind of leader the NPP will be presenting to the Ghanaian people post the primaries. Obviously, the reason the four are there is because they, they all have the potential. But at the party level, what is the kind of leader that at the end of the day you expect that um, you will be presented to the Ghanaian people in terms of qualities? I, I, I always say when it comes to this issue, that normally it's not just about the candidate per se. It's what the party collectively is bringing on board. What is the vision of the party going to the 2024 elections vis-a-vis -vis our achievements, our challenges as a government? We are going to defend our eight years record. And that is very key. You can have one of the best candidates that you could possibly have, who has vision, who has plans and those things. But if you are unable to defend your record within these eight years, mm -hmm. it becomes difficult for the candidate. So let's talk so, about that record. What is that record that you're defending? Well, for eight years, Ghanaians gave us a mandate. Mm -hmm. The country was at a particular point in 2016. What was that point? Right. And you know, we, we, we knew the challenges that we have, the doom saw that was in the country, cancellation of teacher, nursing, training, alarm, many of them, you all know. Right. Between 2017 to date, we have, had, we have had our ups and downs as mm -hmm. a political party. What the average Ghanaian is looking for in the new patriotic party, in our candidate, is how we'll be able to let them know where we came from, where we are now, the challenges mm -hmm. that we are going through as a country, which I admit, and also give them assurance that, yes, we are in, we are in trying times, but the government and the party is in fully control, and no matter what, we are going to come out of it. And if Ghanaians want to continue to see development in this country, between MPP and the rest, which political party should be given the nod to continue? If we use the 2016 yardstick, given the current state of the economy, um, then the NPP is not coming back. Well, it depends on how, how, how you address the issue. It depends on how you want, to, you want to comment about it. What was the yardstick in 2016? What really happened? Mm -hmm. Were there any global shocks? In 2020 elections, 2024 elections, there are tri time, there are challenges. What are the causes? And these are explanations people want to know. Every no, but government... but bottom line, the economy has been run down. Yeah. Whether they were by external ch shocks or by internal situations, the economy has been run down and it would seem that the MPP administration is struggling to bring it back up. And so bottom line, the NPP wouldn't be having the mandate to come back if we are going by the 2016 so, 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 so you also agree with me that between 2016 to 2019, was the economy run down? Was the economy an improvement on 2016 or not? It's a question that as a voter, I'll ask myself. And if NPP is claiming that there is global shocks, is it true? Is it happening in other countries? Are they also experiencing the same thing? That is one. Then two, is there any hope that where we find ourselves in, we are going to come out of it? Are there any indicators to prove to us that indeed the government is turning things around? The president made an important statement that as a party, as a government, we may not be able to revive life. But we know how to revive the economy. But you have and insurance. For now, you have, because 40, if inflation still stands at 40% or more, it has only come down, but it hasn't changed the, you know, the, <laughs> the situation on ground for a lot of Ghanaians because things are still expensive of to course. buy. I, 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 it's something that I will not run away from. It's something that I will not deny. That times are hard. Times are tough. And as a government, as a party, I appreciate it. I'll be fooling myself in sorry to say that I'm oblivious of what is happening on the street. It's something that we admit. But the issue is, is there hope at the end of the tunnel? Yes, there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Because looking at how things are coming down, 
I will wish that you engage me again. Maybe first quarter next year or mm. second quarter next year. By December 7, 2024, Ghanaians will at least will look at what has happened in the previous years and look at on December 7, where the economy stands, whether there have been improvement in their life or not. Who, who has given us this hope when the president has openly said that, you know, more or less lifted his hands in despair and resigned to the situation and said the next president will deal with the problems of the country. So who, who has given us this hope at this point? No, the president is one admitting that times are hard. And the president is also giving us hope that he has started, put, he has started putting certain uh, mechanisms and certain Is that what the president said? For me, that's why I That's why you, you yes. understood. Yes. At the end of the day, he has, he has put certain things in place. But by 2024, we wouldn't have gotten to the promised land yet. And the next MPP government that comes in, We'll be able to get to where we want to get. That's your interpretation That's of, of what the president said. That is said. my understanding of it. Looking at where we started as, as a government from 2016, the challenges that came in. We are still in the challenges. And if you look at even the reason why we went to IMF, it's going to take a couple of years to come out of it. So it, 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 it wouldn't have been proper for the president to come and say that all is well, all will be well by 2024. At least he's letting us know the true picture. I see. Of what's so, going so, to so then, at this point, this hope you're giving us—who is the the torchbearer for this hope? Because the, I, I mean, the president is exiting. Mm -hmm. Who now is the torchbearer of this hope, in your opinion? November fourth, for this time. Let's look at these four right. you're presenting on November fourth. Um, for the rest of us who are not within the NPP or members of the NPP, what does it say about the? kind of government the NPP will be giving the Ghanaian people should it come back in 2024? Well, well, by God's grace and with the support of the good people of this country, when we win in 2024, one thing that is very clear is that every leader has his own style. His Excellency the President has his style. Mm -hmm. Our next president will have his style. But one thing I can assure you, that the party that from 2000 when we first won elections, that believes in coming out with monumental policies and programs. When President Kufo came in, he introduced um, a, a Metro Mass, the National Health Insurance, or those things. And today, when we talk about President Kufo, people associate him with that and remember him for that. But let's today, talk about... When you talk about Nana Dankwa Kufad, people will always remember the face in the high school. And I can assure you, the next president of this country from the MPP will also come up with something monumental that Ghanaians will always remember. And that is what MPP is noted for. But so every government. But, but for the vice president, Dr. Baumia, there are those who are concerned that his, his record within the current administration uh, will go against him because you know, he comes with that baggage. Um, when you look at Kennedy in Japan, there are those who feel that his outbursts in the past and, and his general conduct will be a problem for him as, as president of the country. So then, uh, I mean, it begs the question, these are your top two candidates. What are you bringing us, really? Well, what I can say for sure is, is that any of the four candidates we elect, will be a strong contender in the 2024 elections. And also, to let you also understand that everyone, even including you, has its advantage and disadvantage, its plus and minuses. No one is perfect in this world. But at the end of the day, let's wait after November 4th and see who no. emerges as the flag bearer of our party. For me, it would be I, difficult. I absolutely, I agree with you. Yes. And I know it would go against your rules to talk about it, uh, individual candidates. But I'm not asking you no, about individual. No, I'm not asking you about individual candidates. Yes. What I'm asking you is, if, if I look at the top two candidates you bring me, each of them have got a baggage. Now, if any of them emerge as winner of, 20, of, of the election, uh, November 4 uh, presidential primary, then I'm asking myself, what kind of a government is the NPP bringing me? So... Mr. Jomar doesn't have a baggage. 
Everyone has a baggage. You have a baggage. No, let, let's a talk baggage. about yours. But at the end of the day, when after November 4th, we have adored our presidential candidate, the person will come out and set out his vision. Let's wait. Is there a plan to deal with these baggage? L let's wait for the person to come out. And I can assure you that after listening to the person's vision for the country in 2024, even if you have any negative thinking about that person, you may revise your notes. I can assure you for that. I see. I, I, I want us to talk about the NPP uh, generally um, in terms of the message you're going to be giving the Ghanaian people post-November 4. What is it going to look like? Why don't we wait till we get to that point? Oh, you must have an idea. No, at the end of the day, even if I have an idea, it will be my idea. But after November 4, the party together with the flag, I will sit down. And we, the good people of Ghana will get to know but our I, message. You know, but as them. you have said before, yes. it's not about the candidate. Yes. It's about what the party is able to do with all the men and women it has. Yes. So my, you know, I'm thinking that you should have an idea of where you're going with us in, in the next phase. I'll keep it to uh, after the November, uh, November 4th. Our name's coming up for vice president already? I'm even vying for it. You are? Yes. Is, are you telling us that <laughs> seriously? Uh, well, definitely, I mean, several, up, up several, several, several names mm -hmm. may come up. It's normal. It's, 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 it's nothing new in our party. So let's wait and see who becomes the flag. But the person who becomes the flag, but also in, will influence who becomes the vice. Mm. So, uh, have some names come up already? When we don't have a flag bearer. Well, but you know, you, we don't you, know. No, but you're also looking at time because you know. No, but then let's get the flag bearer first because it depends on who becomes the flag bearer. You know, our party has always had this north-south uh, dynamics. Okay. So it depends Is it on, going to play out in choosing the vice president? If, unless it changes this time around. From 1992, on, on, uh, uh, except for uh, 96, where it changed, always has been the north-south uh, pairing. So let's wait and see where the flag bearer will come from. That will also influence uh, the, the person who becomes the running mate. W will the NPP consider a, f a female running mate? It can put an application. Will the NPP consider a female running mate? NPP is open for all gender. It doesn't matter whether it's a female or a male. At the end of the day, we are looking for competence. I see. Um, just one last thing before we go. You've had cause to serve notice that the party will demand reshuffle of any minister who performs poorly. Now, I want us to talk about your assessment now. Uh, we haven't seen any particular reshuffle. Uh, and, and so, what's your assessment now? Well, I, I, I will still continue to advocate for that. It's something that everyone knows, that I want to see reshuffle in this government. And I, I, I don't shy away from it. But at the end of the day, is that, that's the prerogative of the president. I, I but do as, agree. As, as, as general secretary, uh -huh. I'll continue to push for it. That there need to be a reshuffle in the government. It's something that I don't shy away from. Is, are there areas that you, you expect to see such a reshuffle? Have you identified those poorly performing ministers and uh, it's, it's, appointees? It's, it's, it's not all about poor performance. Don't, don't, don't make that mistake. Sometimes, as a government, you need to move people around to have you know, new faces and also to have people with new visions and new ideas. That does not mean you are not performing. But I want to bring in someone to also, you know, change the whole setup in your ministry mm -hmm. or in your institutional agency or for a new person to come in with his, his vision, as I've indicated. I, so it's, it's, it's something... Justin, not, I, I, you know, you're sketching around the question. I'm not. So, so let me ask you maybe yes, a more maybe, direct one. Well. Are you content with the ministers, the appointees, as we have them now? For me, the basis of my argument for Rishaf is to give room for people with new ideas also coming. No, you also said poor, poor, poor performance, which was it. really important for you. You said it. No, no but it, that's, that's something that you said before. And if you want me to yes, quote, quote it, it, I will find it yes, and then try, quote try this to you. Um, this is you. Yes. You said... Are you quoting? I am. Okay. The party worked so hard in 2016 for us to win the election. Yeah. Therefore, we will also work hard to win in 2024. Yes. But at this point, if a minister, a CEO, or an MMDCE is not committed to the task ahead, just reshuffle or be reshuffled by the party. So Should I go on? 
Go ahead. This was at a, at a, te a TESCON event in Kumasi. Yes. You go on to say, it is important that we remind ourselves that whichever position we are occupying, it is not because of our titles, but it is because the NPP is in power. End yes. of quote. So is a poor performance. Uh, you must have heard it if you don't... No. If you're not committed because to the, the task. the statement is very clear. It, so what is the task? What, what, what does committed to the task mean then, if you're not committed... No, but that, that, does, that does not mean it's poor performance. It, oh, it's, okay, it's, you it's, tell me. What does it mean? It still backs my earlier point that I made. Right, so we are in as a political party to win elections 2024. Right, and in so doing, your vision as an appointee should reflect that. If at this point in time, mm -hmm. your vision and your action does not reflect that, I was speaking at a political program. Mm -hmm. And this was premised on the fact that some of our rank and file were complaining that when they go to these appointees, they weren't opening their doors uh, to them to meet and engage them. And I was explaining to them that these things does not inure to the benefit of our party. When party supporters come to you and you show them away, you don't open up to them. Why should party supporters have any preferential treatment over the rest of Ghanaians? No, it, uh, at that point, like I indicated, it was a political program that I was speaking So it's to. just it, political talk? No, it's not political talk. Okay. For instance, there are certain discussions I can, I can have here that would be different from when I'm meeting with party people. So it's like asking me, okay, if people attend or go to ministers, should they open their doors? Is, isn't yes. that double standard? No, it's not double standard. If you tell me that what you say here will no, be different or, or, or from unless, what you Unless you're also being hypocritical. Because at the end of the day, there are certain discussions you can have in your house that when they come out, you will not have. Let, let us be frank about this. It's, and it's not like you're telling people to go and commit a crime or to go and do something bad. So it is political talk? No, it's not political talk. I'm telling you about the platform that uh, I was having the program. That I have met with Tescon, uh, our, our group, who are an intellectual ring of the party. And their argument was that when they go to these ministers, they don't attend to them. And these are the same people that we are going to use to campaign for us, to go around to do the Okay, so work. then I would ask, then yes. I would ask, Justin. Yes. Who are the ministers, CEOs, or MMDCEs who are not committed to the task ahead? Well, I don't think it would be fair to sit on this. Have um, you identified some? Even if I have, I will not say it here. At least I do have the day, appointment and disappointment. No, I'm not, I'm not asking for names. Yes. Have you identified some? Oh, certainly, yes. Okay. And, certainly, and, yes. and your goal was to ensure that, you know, the pet president, uh, they either reshuffled themselves or the president uh, reshuffled to them. They were reshuffled by the party. Those are your words, reshuffled by the party. Has it happened? Well, as I indicated, I trust the Discussion. That's not what you said. Which means that the party had the power to do that as well. I told you that. Justin, you hit me. Um, no, and, and I don't want to, sure, sure. to just get around the issue. Yes. Um, this is what you said uh, to, to test on income and you tell us it was I, 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 if, if you look at it, it was based on certain foundations, certain principles. No, I don't want us to go back to it. I was going to ask you. Whether or not the party has presented any names for reshuffling to the president? Well, I cannot deny or confirm it here. I see. Thank you for coming, Justin. Thank you. My guest today on Hot Issues has been Justin Kodia Frimpong, who is the General Secretary of the NPP. He tells us that the NPP is headed for a gracious election on November 4 to elect who could be president for uh, Ghana in the 2024 uh, elections in apropos of the party. Um, we wish the NPP the very best and we'll be here to see how things pan out. Bye-bye.